Hey, what's up, guys? Dark Wicker here, and in today's video, we are going to react or break down the new Wardrift balance changes that are coming out next week. Wardrift patch 4.2a is coming out, and we have a lot of adjustments, a lot of changes because um, they messed up the meta by changing all those ADCs, and ADCs are everywhere. We have ADCs in the barrel lane, ADCs in the jungle, ADCs in the mid lane, ADC in the bottom lane. <laughs> you guys know by now. Um, luckily, we don't have that many ADC support as well. On top of that, just Ash and Senna, I guess. But yeah, the meta change, and they are adjusting it by buffing assassins. And we have some very interesting changes. So if you guys are interested to see what they have changed for the next patch, the next patch is coming out next Thursday, by the way, for you guys who are wondering. So let's get started. Hope you guys will enjoy this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And we're gonna start with the boss. So for the first buff, we have Akali. Akali base armor is getting increased by 4, making her early game better. And then also the base damage of her first will be getting buffed by 5. I think um, it's a slight adjustment that is going to help her out in the barrel lane especially. Or in the mid lane against like champions uh, Zed, Yasuo, Yone, maybe Garen against melee champions the base armor is definitely going to help in the early game and obviously plus five base damage is gonna be nice overall but nothing too major like usually those base damage uh buffs aren't that insane they are like for the early game it's nice to have but like ap ratios buffs are way 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 more dangerous than those plus five damage buffs next one darius passive got changed in the early game the damage per stack um is getting increased by three and then in the late game also by uh three so each stack is gonna do three more damage and you can stack up to five times so 50 more damage per stack i mean 15 15 more damage per second when you have five uh stacks so i guess that's nice to have but they did nerf they they are nerfing darius jungle clear speed because the darius jungle clear is actually really good thanks to the bleeding working onto the jungle camps i don't think it's gonna affect this meta or I don't think it's going to affect the jungle Darius too much. Obviously, the jungle clear is going to hurt him, but it was very fast. Um, but yeah, in total, Darius Baron Lane is going to do more damage, and Darius in teamfights, even as a jungler, is going to do more damage as well. Next one. I'm not sure why they're doing this, but they are buffing Ezreal. I guess Ezreal, in their opinion, um, is weaker in comparison to other ADCs, but I'm in my opinion, Ezreal in the right hands is absolutely busted. Like, if you know Kranix on Ezreal, uh, he uh, wins almost every game, or Doom on Ezreal as well. This champion is a late game monster and he's just so so strong, especially in solo queue. He's very safe and he does a lot of damage and he's super scaling. So what they did is the base attack damage per level is getting increased by 0.4. So that's actually a decent amount. Then the base attack speed is also getting increased by 10%. The base damage of the first ability is getting increased by 5. And the ultimate cooldown is getting decreased in the mid and late game by 5 seconds each. So uh, level 2, 5 seconds less. Level 3, 10 seconds less than beforehand. Um, yeah, I think the Mystic Shot base damage... It's going to make his early game slightly better, obviously, plus 5 damage. But the attack damage per level and the base attack speed are way more significant. Base attack speed 10% is a decent amount. And obviously, base attack damage per level in the late game when he's level 15, he's going to have way more um, att base attack than beforehand. So definitely a decent, no, not broken or over buffed. I mean, he is too, he is strong. So I think, okay, never mind. I worded it wrong. I think he's strong enough that he didn't need a buff. So it is an over buff, but it's not like a buff where I would say, wow, he is absolutely uh, broken, broken, broken. I mean, he is broken to be fair. <laughs> what am I saying? I hate Ezreal's. Playing against a good Ezreal is so hard. So yeah, I'm not sure why they're doing it. It's a big mistake in my opinion. I mean, they're probably like comparing the Wild Rift average win rate that they're like, oh, wow, the average Ezra player only has 48% win rate, while Kaiser is sitting on 55 win rate. We need to buff Ezra. That's how they do it usually. Um, 
yeah but uh, a good Ezreal is nightmare it's like you can't compare like if you compare like a Lee Sin win rate or Camille win rate those high skill level champions right they always have low average win rates because they're hard to execute hard to play but in the right hands they are still very very strong it has been in the past Camille getting um nerfed over actually you know sometimes they're looking at pro play as well but a lot of times they're just looking at the average win rate across the ranks so is it a really good indicator if you're comparing like okay what's the, like the diamond or the diamond average win rate on s real in comparison to like what does like a cracked s real one trick pony do in challenger Edo? he's just gonna wipe everyone i mean sometimes they do look at look at com competitive to be fair now for Galio's ultimate they're reducing the cooldown nice to have by 10 seconds at each rank nice to have nothing too special graves new destiny crit six bullets um from 120 damage each to 130 damage each uh pretty good uh damage buff and now with infinity edge also 10 percent damage each more so 10 percent damage buff like from 120 to 130 i mean percentage wise is obviously more now this buff is pretty significant kane is getting buffed or should i say blue kane is getting buffed so first of all the required energy you need for darken for the blue form is getting reduced from 8000 to 7000 so you can get it easier then also the amount of energy you're getting from ranged champions is getting increased from 18 to 24 so plus six more which is oh diesel like very big amounts it's uh plus 33 percent then darken uh gaining taking down long range champions also you if, if you kill a range champion you also get plus 30 more in comparison to before and so again with 33 percent um buff in terms of energy gaining so they reduced the energy requirement by the 1000 and then they increase the energy you can gain by uh, 33 percent and now also on top of that the passive darken additional damage is getting increased by six um in the early game making his early game damage way better and in the later stages by uh four percent but that's also decent amount a decent damage buff in comparison to beforehand yeah it's almost it's almost 20 percent damage buff on the passive now blades reach bonus attack damage ratio is getting increased by 10 percent that is very good for blue cane because blue cane obviously uses the second ability while he's dashing like he's walking with the third ability and then he's using the second ability while he's walking uh in the wall and poking people down doing a lot of uh initial uh, burst damage especially with the mana immune now mana immune can proc the second ability as well so very good for blue cane i'm i'm already calling it right blue cane is gonna be busted like last patch i was like this patch he's fine he's fine he's s tier but with these changes i think blue cane especially since we have adc meter we have adc meter and they're buffing uh insane assassin insane assassin and then uh, the shadow step attack damage ratio is getting increased by 10 percent plus the mana is getting reduced wait let me read this up really quick Wait, if you wait, are you in hard? Wait, I need to read the ability again. I thought the shadow step is like the where you're walking through uh, the walls, or you can walk through walls. What do they mean with attack damage ratio? Are you buffing like the next uh, auto attack or your next uh, ability? Not sure. Let me check really quick. I'm curious. Okay, third ability gains gains thirty five percent movement speed and can move through terrain for five seconds. Kane restores upon Kane restores HP scaling with your AD upon entering terrain for the first time. Oh, that's what I mean. You have more sustain now. Ah, I was wondering what they what they meant with the attack damage ratio. So the healing you're getting when you're using the third ability into a terrain is getting increased. So the more AD you have, the more healing you're getting whenever you're going through walls. Oh, this is so good, actually. I like when I read it, I was wondering, 
But this is so good. That makes me even better than I thought. This is so good. Blue can. Trust me. Blue can new video. If you guys want it, write it down below. I will. I have a red can video that I want to upload. But I guess we're gonna do the blue can video first, right? Um. Now, Karzix. The base damage of Karzix first ability is getting increased by five at each rank. Nice to have. Obviously, nothing to major. Plus five. It's um in the early game plus ten percent, and then later on it's irrelevant. Um, but yeah, 10% bonus, 10% more damage in the early game. Nice to have for better snowballing, but in later stages it really doesn't matter. Now Master Yi, the base attack damage is getting increased by plus 2. Uh, you guys know base attack damage buffs are always big, because your early game is first better and every ability is also going to do more damage. Then on top of that, they're reducing the cooldown of the first ability by 1 second. Nice to have Master Yi buff, but nothing too major in my opinion. No misfortune. Misfortune's base attack damage is getting increased by plus two, and the passive laugh tap damage when attacking a new target is getting increased by five percent in the early game and in the late game. Definitely making misfortune's early game much better, so she can snowball easier or she can bully uh, people in the laning phase harder. Now Pantheon's base mana is getting increased by 30 and the base mana regeneration is getting increased by 3. This is gonna make laning Pantheon mid or Baron lane Pantheon better. The first ability bonus attack damage ratio is getting increased by 10% and same applies. I think this is okay this is for the enhanced I think enhanced first ability. Also for the enhanced first ability by 10%. And you get the refund. The refund on the first ability, if you're not using it, is getting increased by 10%. And the ultimate damage bonus ratio is also increased by 10%. Um, overall, I think it's a nice buff for Pantheon because they increase the ratio. And ratio buffs are obviously very good because the more AD you have, the more value you're getting on your abilities. Especially on the first ability, which is your main damage skill. So this is going to make Pantheon definitely better. I need to try it out myself. Pantheon, in my opinion, I've played it a few times. The downside is still the late game. 10%, I'm not sure if 10% additional attack damage ratio is going to make Pantheon strong enough that he's viable in the mid and late game. That's the that's the problem right now. His early game is strong, but his mid and late game is terrible. Or should I say the mid-late game part is terrible. Now we have Pike. Pike, base armor per level is getting increased by 0.7. why even so there he, he basically i think if my math is right 10.5 more armor at level 15 and then base magic resistance also get increased by 0 0.9 whoa okay making them better against uh, majors in the mid lane the passive gift of the drowned one stored damage cap 60 percent health and 140 plus 800 percent the val lower value of the bonus attack damage get increased to 65 base minimum and 160 base plus 180 uh plus 800 percent so they're yeah they're, they're basically just increasing the damage cap on the passive in the early game the bonus attack damage ratio stays the same. But yeah, um, makes the early game much better and makes him in total better because he can store more damage now than beforehand. Especially in the early game, you will notice it. Because you have like 5% more, 5% more of your HP plus 20 base more every year, like uh, in total, always. And then for the first ability, they increase the base damage of the first ability by 10 and the ultimate the execute threshold is getting increased what oh so you can uh, one shot even easier now or execute easier now they increased it in the mid game by 25 and in the late game when you have uh, three points into the ultimate by 50. um i'm not sure why they're buffing pike i think pike is broken um he's so strong in the mid lane uh, mid, uh, mid lane and in the support position i'm not sure why they're buffing pike pike is a nightmare to deal with now for set, um, pit, grid, right hook bonus damage is getting increased. Wait, hook bonus damage level five plus fifty percent bonus attack damage level seven plus fifty percent bonus attack damage. 
or do they mean level times seven? So plus two more base damage. Yeah, it's level level times seven. Okay, I don't know why they wrote it like this. Yeah, I mean, it would stack up. I mean, obviously, like when you're level fifteen times seven instead of times five, it's a decent damage buff. Like decent. Like you will notice, like set base damage is gonna be much higher with a passive now. Then the second ability. They increase the bonus attack damage by zero point zero five more scaling so the more attack damage you have the more damage you will do with haymaker second ability um yeah so i think it's a pretty big buff on a set pretty big buff i think the passive buff is pretty big like not gonna lie no they didn't change the bonus attack damage on the passive but they changed the, like the numbers like let's at level one you will get five plus 50 percent of your bonus attack damage minimum so now you have from five to seven mm, which is like almost 50 percent more damage in the early game and at every other level you're gonna get plus two plus two plus two more plus two more damage than beforehand it will stack up i mean it's um at level 15 it's 30, 30 more bonus damage on your auto attacks. Like when you have the passive, it's going to be 30 additional bonus damage. Every auto attack, pop, pop, pop. It's going to stack up. Wait, let me read it. Let me read to make sure if I'm understanding it correctly. I am pretty sure I understood it or correct, but let's see. Uh, sets, let me open the description of sets passive. Yeah, it's a uh, it's initial. Sets or attacks alternate between left and right punches. Right punches further follow the left quickly and uh, the okay. I mean, it's uh, every second auto attack. Every second auto attack is gonna do thirty more damage in the late game. That's how it works. I mean, I mean, 30 is probably not that much, but I mean, it's still nice to have, right? 30 more additional damage. Like, if you think about, the, like, the here, they're, like, buffing the base damage by 5. Oh, 5 more base damage, 5 more base damage. And now his second auto attack has 30 more base damage. I mean, it's not, that's not little, by the way. That's, you will notice this. Okay, oh god. Purge on hit effect ratio is getting increased by 20% and fear beyond death bonus attack damage ratio is also getting increased by 20%. That's a lot of damage, huh? That's a lot of damage. Interesting, we need to try out. I think like the ultimate is gonna do is gonna scale with 20% more damage. On hit effect ratio. Wait, man, what are we did again? I'm just making sure I'm understanding it correctly. On hit, like, isn't the second ability your main damage where you're like shooting around? Yeah, it is. Shoots the nearest enemy rapidly for four seconds and apply on hit effects at 50% effectiveness. So if you're running, what is on hit? What you're running on Urgot though? What on hit? Items are you running? Blade? If you run Blade, you would uh, proc 70% on, on that shit now, instead of 50. What on that items are you running on Urgot though? I don't think you're running that many. Black Cleaver. Does Black Cleaver count? Black Cleaver, Blade of the Rune King. Is Black Cleaver on it passive? I think you're stacking it, by the way. Wait, doesn't it also buff Kraken Slayer? Kraken Slayer on hit, technically. Okay, no. You guys inform me better on this one. <laughs> on hit effect ratio. I think it's like when you have Blade of the Rune King, let's say your Blade of the Rune King does 100 additional damage, uh, and, uh, and beforehand it would be 50, and now it's 70. I mean, that's how it works. Now for Vayne. 
Vein base attack damage getting increased by 10% and base attack speed per level is getting increased by 1%. So in total, she gets 25% level 15 more attack speed than before, and which is a lot. I'm not sure why they're buffing Vayne, because you know, Vayne is one of my nightmare ADC champions to face against. Big buff. Big buff. Like, first of all, making her early game better, 10%, and then making her late game also better. It's 25% more attack speed in total at level 15. Why, Riot? Why? Okay, let's move on to nerfs. Kaisa is getting no off. What a surprise. The base attack speed is getting decreased. Or should I say reduced by 10%. Nice. We like that. The first ability damage onto monsters is getting decreased by 50%. Huge Kaisa jungle nerf. So they want to kill Kaisa jungle. Not sure if she's still going to be viable in the jungle. The second ability, Void Seeker attack damage bonus, is getting decreased by 20%. 20% big damage nerf. And then the second ability, ability power bonus, is getting decreased by 10%. Honestly, that just means AP. AP Kaiser is gonna stay stronger than beforehand. Like, AP Kaisa in the jungle is so popular and so strong. And since they are nerfing the attack damage ratio, not the ability power ratio. Ah, AP Kaisa is going to be better. And then AD, potentially. Now Twitch. The Deadly Venom monster damage modification getting decreased by 40%. A 40% damage nerf on Twitch passive. Same applies for the third ability. A 40% damage nerf for Twitch third ability. They are killing those two uh, uh, ADC junglers because they have been very, very popular in the jungle right now. And now for the uh, movement speed, it's getting decreased by 10%. And for various, let's see what they're doing exactly. They are nerfing the base. The base by, yeah, the base damage of the second ability by 0.5%. And then the ability power by half. Yeah, they're nerfing the ability power by half. What does that mean? AD various. It's going to be stronger than AP Varus because they are literally nerfing the scaling of the second ability ability power by 50%. The base still stands, obviously. So the more ability power you have, the more percentage damage you would do. But now they're cutting the, uh, the ratio by half from uh, 0 0.02 to 0 0.01. It's a big nerf, by the way. That's 50% nerf. For the scaling let's say you have like yeah if you have like 100 you get one percent more right if you have 100 ability power you get one percent more and before it was two percent and that you would have like let's say you have like 200 300 ability power you're just getting um half of the additional maximum hp damage it's a big nerf I would say it's a big nerf. They're, they're nerfing the base and they're nerfing the scaling for AP Varus. And the second ability, that's where the, uh, the main percentage damage comes from. Where uh, What makes you shred tanks is the second ability because of the percentage HP damage. Now for Yoni, they are nerfing the uh, passive, I mean what passive, I mean the base attack speed by 10% and they are nerfing the second ability damage to monsters in the early game by 50 and then in the late game only by 10. They are definitely making Yoni's early game in total weaker, plus his early game jungle clear speed, but uh, the second ability doesn't matter for jungle clear, to be fair. It's on the first ability. Your first ability is your main damage in the jungle clear. But 10% is still gonna hurt you. Uh, like, not gonna lie. Um, Yoni is just super broken, and I think even after these nerfs, he's still gonna be the same broken shit champion. Now for Essence Reaver, the passive is getting reduced by uh, 2 seconds from 6 to 4. And what they're doing is, they're making Essence Reaver base, base passive better than beforehand. Even if you have low crit rate, you have a guaranteed 20% additional damage now uh, in comparison to beforehand. Because in comparison to beforehand, at... Um, at 100%, you would have 30% addition crit, right? But now even at 0 
crit rate you have already the base minimum of 20 percent additional damage so this is a huge essence reaver buff like huge so even on non-crit based champions you have the automatic 20 percent additional damage on your abilities um it's a lot wait let me check the stats of essence reaver again i'm curious I am curious, guys. Let me check, let me check, let me check. But yeah, it's gonna make Essence Reaver in the early game way better for a lot of champions. Attack damage, crit rate, ability haste. And it was a 6 second cooldown, not only 4 seconds. Very good! It's gonna make Lucian, Corky, maybe champions like... Okay, Rengar can run it. Someone, I thought someone said the first ability somehow doesn't apply Essence Reaver on Rengar. Like, I thought it would, but it doesn't. Apparently, someone tested it. Maybe he's the inting and he tested it wrong. But crit pantheon can run it. Like uh, crit Javan, I've run uh, I've ran it on crit Javan as well. Crit Javan just one shotting people. But yeah, I mean the typical essence reaver champions are probably Misfortune, Lucian, Corky. Those are gonna benefit a lot from this, especially Corky. Now Immortal Shippo got the nerf finally shit item. They are reducing the shield. By two points per one percent crit, so uh, at hundred percent crit you would have five hundred additional shield, but now it's only three hundred. So, a uh, decent, a decent shield nerf, and they're also nerfing the life steal passive. When you're low life or you fall below thirty five percent HP, you will get ten percent additional life steal. That's gonna uh, get cut by half uh, to only five percent. A decent nerf to shield bow. But it's still gonna be a very good item because the stats are absolutely amazing. And the shield was too overtuned, obviously, but it's still gonna be a very big shield. Like, it's still gonna be 500 shield at 100% uh, uh, crit rate, which is a lot. Now, Phantom Dancer, the uh, damage cost got increased by 100 gold, um, and the attack speed, bonus attack speed, getting reduced by 5%. It doesn't matter, it's still a very good item. You know what the problem is? If the stacks apply on every out attack, no matter what, monsters. Minions, Tyrrhus, Champions. That's why it's so strong. That's why Phantom Lancer is so strong. Because it's very easy to reach the bonus attack speed. 25 bonus attack speed, no matter what. The Rift Herald is getting nerfed. Current HP times 70%. 70% of the current health or 30% of the maximum health, the higher of the two. Current health level times 70%. Oh, okay, I see. I mean, you know, whenever the Rift Herald is charging, it loses HP, and now it's just losing more HP than before, and I mean, pretty simple. Gregors! Oh, they're nerfing blue Gregors. The, uh, the blue Gregors memes got killed. So he has a minimum of 1.25 seconds cooldown, no matter what, even if you have, like, uh... Full ability haste plus ice dragon build. You can no longer perma dash. But I mean, one one point two five is still very very low though. But it uh, basically means you don't have to rush completely full ability haste anymore. Now for Jin's adjustments, they're nerfing the bonus damage by one percent, which is gonna be a lot um, in the late game. But they are gonna give him whisper movement bonus crit ratio is getting increased by. 5% so my man Jin is gonna run around um, Speedo Mato Speedo Gonzalez too fast too fast to furious and then the first ability attack damage bonus is getting decreased by 5% so uh, damage wise it's a decent 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 nerf on him like really decent because they're cutting the attack damage ratios for the passive and for the first ability but they're increasing the more mobility that he's gonna get so it's, a, it's like a balance, more utility for less damage. I think it's overall a nerf, to be fair. Like, 1% on the passive is a lot, and then also 5% on the first ability is also a lot. Then for Bloodthirster, they are increasing the base attack damage by 5, which is going to be a 10% damage buff, and they're decreasing the physical vamp by 3%, reducing the lifesteal. So, less utility, more damage on Bloodthirster. 
So overall, I think, yeah, they're killing Kaiser and Twitch out of the jungle. Yoni nerf doesn't really matter. Varus nerf is gonna uh, hit AP Varus. Essence Reaver buff is gonna be big. Immortal Shippo doesn't matter. Or I think Immortal Shippo and Phantom Netto nerf don't really matter that much. It's still gonna be very good items. But you will definitely notice the Immortal Shippo nerf. And then for the buffs. Um, Ezreal. You will definitely see Ezreal being much better now. Kane. Also going to be much better. I guess Pike also. And Vayne. Vayne is a huge buff by the way. Vayne is a hip. I don't know why they're buffing Vayne. Um, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell me you, uh, tell me you guys um, the opinion. Tell me your opinion in the comments below. What you guys think about the balance changes. Um, what you guys like. What you guys, uh, guys dislike. And what's your opinion about the ADC meta. Or the, or the ADC jungle meta. Write it down below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright. It's hard to breathe. But that's alright. Hush.